Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth video in our campus placement data set playlist. Uh, up till now, we've almost completed the data pre-processing, we've uh, imputed all the NAN values, we've removed all the outliers, we've done data visualization and everything. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the final step that is going to be encoding. So let's get started. Okay, so the next task that we're going to complete is called encoding. Right, so what is encoding basically? So uh, let's take a look at our data set. Uh, as we can see, there is a lot of columns that have uh, like strings in them, right? And our machine learning models, our classification regression models, they can't interpret data that is not numerical, right? So they can't interpret what M is. They, they, they don't know that M stands for male or psi and text stands for science and technology and whatnot what they need to know is whether this uh, what they need is numerical data right our machines can't interpret categorical data our machines can't interpret strings so what encoding essentially means uh, is that we have to create uh, we have to convert this categorical data into numerical data okay so that essentially is encoding so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at two two different types of encoding the first one is going to be label encoding right so for that uh, i'll just write the code and i'll see you in a second okay so yeah what we've essentially done is from sklearn.preprocessing this sklearn.preprocessing is a library that is used for data preprocessing so we've imported uh, the label encoder and we're using this label encoder method to create uh, we're, we're creating an object of this la label encoder class right so this label encoder that small l small e label encoder is an object of the class this label encoder and we're using this object to fit transform the placement filtered column so let's see what these columns are first so what these object columns are there is gender work experience so sorry i've, I've written this twice i'll just delete this uh, yeah so we have gender work experience specialization and status right so let's take a look at this uh, the data set gender there is work experience okay specialization all of these are objects right all of these are strings so we have to uh, convert all of this into numerical data so let's see how we can do that so we have created a list of these columns like this and after that we have uh, passed that list into that fit transform method of the label encoder right using a loop basically we could have written this thing again and again four times but i've written all of this inside a loop just to automate the process right so i've used the fit transform method of this object label encoder and i've passed the filtered columns in it right so what's what's essentially happening is all of these gender work experience specialization status are being passed into this label encoder and it is encoding them so let's see how the encoding process is happening right so first what is encoded the gender is encoded right so where is gender okay so the gender is converted to 1 and 0 if we increase the amount of this let's say if we increase it to 10 yeah see as we can see the gender 1 uh, if we compare it to the original one represents male right and the gen uh, gender zero represents female as we can see zero represents female similarly work experience zero uh, work experience zero represents no and work experience one represents yes right so this is a data that our computer can understand this is binary data this is numerical data this our computer can understand but the strings it could not okay so this is the basic necessity of encoding so this was label encoding uh, but we, there is a certain issue with label encoding right so let's let's take an example of countries if you're talking about three countries let's say india pakistan and sri lanka and we have to encode them 
so if we use label encoder it will uh, let's say it will uh, term pakistan as 0 uh, it will term sri lanka as 1 and it will term india as 2 right so what happens in our machine learning models it is that it doesn't understand what 0 1 2 is so it associate associates the numbers with its respective weights so what that statement means is that it will treat india as superior to sri lanka or pakistan just because it has a higher number associated with it india is termed 2 so it will assume that india is greater than sri lanka or pakistan when in reality it does not make any sense right how can a country be greater than something else uh, country is i don't think it's a right example we can uh, like talk about fruits as well like if there is a mango orange and apple right so there are three fruits so if a mango is one uh, mango is zero apple is one orange is two so uh, our model will think that orange is greater than both of the other fruits just because it has a higher number associated with it so it creates a bias in our model and that's something that we don't need and to tackle that situation we have another uh, another uh, what's this called another encoding method that is called the one hot one hot encoding right uh, as a matter of fact uh, there are uh, videos in our channel only in our ieee vit pune student section channel on both one hot and label encoding if you want to take a deeper dive into these you can uh, take a look at those videos as well right so i'll be coding the one hot encoding now so let's go ahead okay so for one hot encoding uh, we use the pd dot get dummies function so uh, first of all uh, what one hot encoding does is it creates new columns for each and every category in a particular column right for let's take an example of hsc uh, hsc subjects right so the first one is commerce then the second one is arts the second one is science the third one is arts right so if we do one hot encoding of this particular column it will create three new columns uh, namely dummy commerce dummy science and dummy arts and we will basically have zeros and ones in them so if, once i'm done with the code it will be a lot more clearer but this is the basic essence of the one hot encoding okay so i'll just see you after i'm done with the code okay now that i'm done with the code i'll explain what this means so as i said uh, in one hot encoding uh, each and every separate class inside a column is uh, gets a separate column right so what's happening over here is we are using the pd dot get dummies function to create separate columns for each uh, different categories inside the hsc uh, hsc stream class all right so what's happening over here is pd dot get dummies for hsc stream class and for the hsc stream we have commerce science and arts and we are using the prefix dummy so we're going to get separate columns for commerce we're going to get separate column for science and we're going to get a separate column for arts let's take a look at the new data set so we have dummy arts we have dummy commerce and we have dummy science and we have zeros and one in it ones in it so there's no scope of having 2 3 4 that we had in label encoding right so there's there's no scope of bias at all so one hot encoding is always better than label encoding in this sense okay a similar process is done for the degree t so i'm not going to repeat that so what's happening yeah so after creating these dummy columns these dummy columns are not automatically concatenated to the original data set right and for that we've used this pd dot concat method to uh concatenate this data frame with these new columns right and access equal to ones means we are uh, doing a column job right so we are concatenating it and after concatenation we are dropping the redundant columns because we have all of these columns we don't have the need for these categorical columns right so we are deleting these columns and after that we are printing it essentially so there we have it we have a proper encoded data set 
we have all the numerical values we have no uh, categorical value in it we have no string or object value in it so our data is completely pre-processed and we can now definitely uh, move ahead to the final step in the process that is uh, splitting uh, our data set into training and testing parts and then finally uh, uh, passing the training and testing parts into our predictive models and finally making predictions so let's go ahead to the final step of our mini project so that is it for the fourth video guys i hope you enjoyed this video uh, we are finally done with all the data pre-processing and now all that we have to do is to use a predictive model to make the final predictions on the data set. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.